I've played a lot of Minecraft Java Edition, but never Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So in this video, you'll see my first reaction to playing the most popular version of Minecraft. So here we are on Minecraft Bedrock Edition, although of course the title screen just says Minecraft. I did upload my skin, but that's it. So let's try playing this version and see what it's like. Again, I basically have no idea what I'm doing. Um, a lot of these screens are very different. I would say, first of all, the big thing that I do notice is the fact that a lot of the animations and the visuals are a lot cleaner and a lot smoother than Java Edition. The visual rendering of the game seems to be completely different, so yeah, it looks like just everything is kind of a little bit in different places. I feel like frames are processed differently because when I move around my frames don't break, but sometimes just sort of moving in different ways it seems to kind of jitter very strangely. And speaking of frames, oh my goodness, the render distance. What in the world is this render distance? I think that's because I'm on Windows 10 Edition, but let's see how far does this go out to. I should probably be able to see this on, on video settings. Oh my, 96 chunk render distance. Apparently it's saying that's too high, it probably is. I guess they recommend a meager 50 chunk render distance. That's insane. That's like, I mean, just 50 chunk as it is is almost double what you get on Java Edition's highest setting. And this can go to rendering in nine times as much as you could on Java. And this is just insane looking at the world at this kind of render. It seems to me that the particles for breaking blocks are a lot different as well, which is interesting, but I guess I better not keep looking at these differences and try and get some things so I don't die. It's weird getting used to seeing my character in the corner there. I'm sure there's a way of turning that off, but I wonder what the whole point of that would be just sort of seeing your character in the corner, why that would really be useful, I'm not sure, but it is sort of interesting. Something good at least is that the inventory screen seems somewhat similar, although the pictures on these tabs are a bit different. And there's these little tabs up here. It does seem like a lot of this has been kind of built from the ground up a lot more. And actually water looks a lot different now that I'm kind of taking a look at that. It seems like just sort of the color is different, maybe a bit smoother, that's strange. It just seems like the lighting and the rendering in general really produces a different visual result. And speaking of rendering, look how weird the dead bush looks. I think that's actually glitched. It looks like the texture is too far in, like the blocks are kind of too squished. That's like super weird because that should be a block wider and I can actually see that the center of that texture is too wide compared to that in Java, so that's kind of bizarre. I keep pressing F3 and I, I forgot that on Bedrock there actually isn't an F3 screen, so I'm not sure where I'd check what how many frame rates I'm getting, but I'm sure my Bedrock viewers are just screaming at the screen right now of what I would be able to do, but either way let's get some wood here. And yeah, definitely the breaking and particle animations are a lot different. It seems like the particles sort of center strangely around the player. That's definitely not what happens in Java Edition. They sort of have like this weird circular way that they break and fall. Yeah, even the grass seems to be rendered too small compared to how they were. It seems like in Bedrock Edition, the grass and dead bushes and things like that are rendered differently than they are in Java, because on Java they're definitely treated as full blocks, but it seems like in Bedrock they're not, and are sort of more so treated like almost an entity. Oh, well, I I guess I can do some manual crafting on here and again just as a strange visual difference it's like items get bigger when I pick them up and why is the chest texture wrong that's kind of weird it's like when you place it down it's correct but your inventory texture is like the ancient old chest from I don't even know how long ago I wonder if they just forgot to update that from back in the pocket edition age but that's definitely a strange feature feels like every single feature of bedrock edition although technically almost the exact same as Java is just slightly different enough that you can notice movement speeds and particles and blocks and just sort of little statistics and things I would assume as well just seem to be so slightly changed that you can notice but not enough that you can really put your finger on it. Any items will sort of have a little popping animation in the inventory when you're using them or when you're getting more of them. And I can definitely tell experience is rendered differently. It doesn't seem to move around either. Just sort of appear next to your player and then go into your inventory. Oh, well, I guess I'll grab my chests and go on and see if we can find a village. Wait, that's weird. When I'm breaking the chest it breaks both parts of it at once? It's like the break animation is localized to what part of the block you start breaking it on? Or is it just on the chest there? It's like the break animation is kind of off-centered. With half of these differences, I'm not sure if they're actually bugs or if they're meant to be how Bedrock Edition acts. You'll have to tell me in the comments below, do you play Bedrock Edition? And if you do, are some of the things I'm encountering bugs? Or is that just how the game is supposed to work? Like with the texture of the dead bushes there. In fact, I'm even just noticing here another difference. It's like I hear like a punching sound when I'm just hitting with an item, which you definitely would 
wouldn't hear in Java unless you're actually using the item, but punching in the air you wouldn't. Oh, and there's a desert temple. We could probably go there for some interesting items. Yeah, water is just rendered incredibly differently. It look, almost looks like a shader or something, and even the same with lava. It's like lava doesn't have any shadows on it in Bedrock, but in Java it does. Oh, and here's my biggest pet peeve about Bedrock Edition, is the item rotation textures. So you can see here on the dirt, it's rotated differently on the side, but on Java the texture isn't rotated kind of circularly, but you can see here the actual position is different on everyone. So whenever I see the dirt or let's say obsidian or different items that are rotated like that, I would expect them to look something like the sandstone or the stone does here, where every single one of them is at the same sort of texture. But on these you can see they're all randomly rotated, which definitely is a different look. Oh, and I didn't even notice that, but we just ran into a village, so that's perfect. We can definitely survive the night in this time now that it's turning nighttime. That's actually really smart to have an open chat button when sleeping if you want to tell their players to sleep. We should have that in Java Edition as well, so it's more intuitive. And the animation's interesting here too, because the villager cloak doesn't look the same when they're walking. It sort of looks like the cloak here is actually more 3D than just a flat texture. And even like this little X out here on the side, it's interesting. I can definitely tell that this is something that was originally originally ported from Pocket Edition and sort of built for more mobile devices because even on like the menu screens here there's very very large buttons on them and is the game not paused? Oh my goodness, the game's not paused. Right, I remember someone commenting about that, that on Bedrock you can't pause the game, so that's definitely something that would make this a lot more of a challenging version. And it's crazy, with this render distance I can see a whole nother desert temple and village all the way back there, although it's incredibly hard to see. Well, let's hope the TNT trap is the same here. Well, I guess we'll just put up some torches, so I'll put those in my... Oh, are you kidding me? You cannot put torches in your offhand in Bedrock Edition, really? Can I go like... I can't put my sword... Oh my goodness, that's crazy. I knew there were some limits on what you couldn't put in your offhand, but you can't put torches in your offhand? That's pretty crazy. I really wonder why that would even be a practical limit. I mean, in Java, you can have literally anything in your offhand. There's no reason why you couldn't. And of course, on top of that, we've got pretty lousy loot from this anyway. I do wonder if TNT works the same on this version, though. Uh, I wonder if I can escape from this alive. Probably not. Uh, no I cannot, although the desk screen is very different, and like I said, the particles there, you can really tell there's that difference, so at least I slept in the nearby bed. But there are a lot of differences between Bedrock and Java Edition that I do know of, other than just ones that you'd experience playing the game and some visual tweaks. So let's take a look at some of those interesting features that you may not know are exclusive to one version or the other. Now from what I know, something I've got to try is defeating the Wither on Bedrock Edition. I've heard it's much more difficult than on Java, so we'll see if that's true. I've given myself some good tools, equipment, food, as well as full netherite protection for armor. So let's see if this is truly a challenge, or maybe just people who play Bedrock haven't tried the Java Wither, so they don't know it's similar. Let's find out which one of these is true. Alright, we're going to try out defeating the Wither in Bedrock Edition. I'm sure this is quite difficult, but how difficult can it really be compared to Java? I'm not sure. So we're going to find out. As it is, the Wither itself is moving around before it's summoned all the way in, which is interesting. And at this distance, it's already launching the heads at us. I do not think in Java it'd be launching the heads that far, and it is incredibly fast. What in the world? That's fast. This is Yeah, this is definitely more difficult on Bedrock. You guys were not joking about that. That is crazy. Look how fast it's going. That's really hard to hit on. Honestly, if it wasn't kind of blocked up there and if I didn't have insanely good armor, this would be nearly impossible to do, really. Although it does seem like you can actually knock back the heads of the wither, sort of like you could with ghast fireballs, and that is definitely not something that is able to be done on the Java edition of the game. And hopefully if our food runs out here, we can actually eat to regenerate and defeat the wither. Its health doesn't seem to be regenerating, but I'm not actually sure if it is or not. I haven't been looking at that. It's been going so fast, it's incredibly hard to actually hit it with a bow and arrow. It seems like when it's hitting the heads is a good time to kill it, but generally it seems to be able to travel incredibly quickly. In Java Edition, the wither is far easier than the Ender Dragon, but I think in Bedrock Edition, it's probably the other way around. I think your hunger runs out faster on Java as well, which is actually easier, as of course then you can eat more food to get your saturation up quicker. Right now the wither is at the stage where we can do this. What in the world? It just summoned wither skeletons? I had no idea that could happen. <laughs> that's insane. That's that okay, that's legitimately pretty dangerous. That's that's really crazy, honestly. Um, at least its health doesn't regenerate, so it's definitely sort of a little bit different of a boss fight with some different mechanics, but it's even trying to hit me right through blocks, so it can totally see through blocks, which is crazy stuff. That's really weird that it summoned in the wither skeletons, definitely making it feel more like a boss mob. But anyway, let's see if we can defeat this all the way. I think the answer is going to be no, and I was slain by an enderman, actually, so that's interesting. 
Well, I admit it, Bedrock, you definitely have a more difficult wither. Um, yeah, that's, that is definitely more difficult than Java Edition. I'm sure I'll be able to defeat it if I try it a couple more times, but it's very interesting to see that, and I found the movement system in Bedrock's a lot clunkier and harder to control just because it generally tends to be a little bit less quick-paced and a little bit more delayed, and so because of that it might be a little bit harder to also deal with these mobs, making them even more dangerous. There definitely seems to be a lot of realms advertisements on literally every single page, and a lot of advertisements in general on Bedrock Edition, so if you do play Bedrock, be sure to tell me in the comments below what you think of these sort of advertisements throughout the game. Now one sort of interesting difference in Bedrock is that there is still 1.8 PvP. They never actually had the combat update as it was exactly, and so you can still spam click to kill mobs which is super interesting, as that's definitely such a massive difference. Maybe if you're a player that still likes to play on 1.8, but now that everyone has the free Bedrock and free Java Edition accounts, you might want to try playing on Bedrock servers a little bit to enjoy something similar to that different style of PvP without the need to play on an old version of the game and still enjoy modern features. Something kind of interesting while I'm looking at it is we do not have these bits of the nether wart blocks in the ground in Java Edition. It definitely only generates as the Nylium, sort of like what it seems to be generating here in the warped forest biome. In the crimson here, there seems to be these random nether wart blocks that are in the ground. Now for starters, one rather interesting thing you have in Bedrock Edition is dead corals and coral reefs. In Java Edition, all corals and coral reefs are alive, but in Bedrock Edition, I believe it's something like 10 or 15% of corals and coral reefs are dead corals. And the corals themselves also generate a lot differently in here, sort of forming large masses of coral that can crawl along the base of things. And they're not just set structures. But it is still interesting to see those coral reefs there with the dead coral. But although Bedrock Edition doesn't have very powerful offhand slots, you do have very powerful armor stands. And I believe you can actually pose them by right-clicking. Maybe you have to shift. Okay, if you're crouching while right-clicking, you can pose these in all kinds of crazy poses, which is pretty cool. I think there's even like a dabbing pose. Yeah, I think that's a dab pose, which is pretty funny, but it's interesting to have all these poses, and especially with the ability to put an item in the hand. This is definitely something we need in Java Edition. But I think one of the biggest features in Bedrock Edition that I do know of is cauldrons differences. Now, cauldrons are really overpowered in Bedrock Edition, as far as I know. And if you place down a bunch of them and fill them up with water, you can actually dye the water in cauldrons. That's right. You can actually have colored water and bedrock edition and i'm sure about 40 percent of my audience which is how many of you play bedrock according to the polls i've done on that are just shaking your head right now that most people don't know that in java but it is pretty cool to actually dye the water in bedrock edition especially considering that you can actually combine dyes to make different colors here this is the way to make dyed leather armor in bedrock edition and it's super interesting to see that process especially since this is a very good decoration for really anything you would want that would involve maybe a potion or or like chemicals, like a perfect mad scientist lab. And then if we grabbed some leather horse armor, which actually looks like it has a different texture in Bedrock Edition and right clicked on there, we could dye that the color that's in the cauldron there and sort of change the color of our horse armor based on the dyes in this cauldron. Or you could have like a building where you have a bunch of dyes laid out. It could be dyeing leathers and different things like that, which I think would be a really cool build. It also seems like there's more water levels as a cauldron only has three levels in Java. But here there's at least one, two, three, four, five. And even just zombies burning up in the sun, it seems like they turn much more red and sort of yellowy than you would see in Java Edition, much different, which is interesting. And even it looks like the fire thing there too is sort of squished. It looks like a lot of textures are sort of strange on this version. But another cool thing with cauldrons and potions in Bedrock is the ability to make tip arrows with the cauldron. So I believe if you have a cauldron and you fill it up with a potion, so it would not actually be filled up with water, you just right click on it like this. And of course, usually you can just spam that. Then that cauldron is not filled up with dye, although there's not really much of a way of telling the difference outside of the particles coming out the top, but it is filled with the potion. And you could grab arrows and turn those into tipped arrows, which is really cool. I also think that'd be probably a cooler way of making tipped arrows, although maybe the fletching table will unite both these versions tipped arrow methods. Although I can't be too jealous, as Bedrock Edition does not have the spectral arrows in the game, I really have no idea why these features aren't ported over to both versions, but still it's very interesting to see those unique things from both Bedrock and Java. I also heard from a friend of mine who plays Bedrock that Elytra Flight is different in this version. So basically I believe what it is is you cannot open open the elytra when you're falling down and yes i just proved that point you definitely cannot do that apparently players on bedrock edition do not have access to the nether roof as well so let's try that one out no no i think you can get to the nether roof maybe you can't break the bedrock 
Oh no, what it is is, okay, the height limit's 128, so that's really interesting. So the actual nether itself is hard-coded not to be able to be larger than that. That is so interesting. Huh, so you can get on the nether roof, you just can't build up here. Very interesting. I wonder if they'll ever change that. Probably not, considering the fact that the nether roof on Java is somewhat of an exploit as well and not really an official thing in the game. It's like the nether sprouts are very common here. It's like all these little features are a little bit different. But anyway, I'm sure I could make a video that's hours long talking about the difference between Bedrock and Java Edition, and maybe I will do one dedicated to those differences later. Also, something my Bedrock viewers may be wondering is how can I make videos that cover features about both Bedrock and Java even though I've basically never played it before? And that's because when I do my research about a certain subject, I always try and make sure to get as much relevant information about Bedrock Edition as well, and because of that there are a lot of features of the game that I do know about. However, of course, some visual rendering things and some slight technical changes like, for instance, how these sort of look a little bit different on the twisting vines, but I'm hoping to expand my knowledge on Bedrock Edition in the future so I can have even more relevant tutorials to that percentage of my audience. However, if you enjoyed this video of my genuine first reaction to Bedrock Edition, make sure to give it the like. Hopefully you're not bored of Bedrock at the end of this and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.